And on behalf of our senior pastor, Dr. Charles Rents, and the whole staff here, welcome to our first concert of 2021. Also, welcome to our first Organ Plus Artist Series of concerts, which will be the third Sunday of each month from January through May of this year. Today, you're going to hear our organist, Keith Rasmussen, with our worship and arts director, Jeff Jordan, playing piano. Next month, on February 21st, you will hear Keith, our organist, with his guest artist, Jerry Bell, who is a trumpeter. He will be playing trumpet and flugelhorn that day with Keith. So welcome to this new series of concerts as well. Now, I do feel the need to tell you that based on recent events with all things COVID, the church has had to make a difficult decision to close concerts down, at least for in-person concert audience. But we will be having concerts virtually, just like this one today. And we will give the choice to the artists that we have scheduled for our winter concert series. So just stay tuned to see who we will have performing. But we will have some Friday night concerts as well. With that being said, uh, I would like to turn the program over at this point to our worship and arts director, Mr. Jeff Jordan. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin does a great job with the concert series. He's built it up to something spectacular, and he's had to shut it down for a short while. But I, I feel certain, Kevin, that um, by, uh, by the fall of this year, we'll be back in in-person concerts as, as, uh, every week, hopefully. Um, I have the great good fortune of introducing someone who is my friend who has been here for, I don't know, three or four years now? Three years. Um, he is one of the finest organists, at least in the Tampa Bay area, if not in all of Florida. And we have him here in Sun City Center. Amazing. Um, I'm just, we're very, very blessed to have Keith Rasmussen as our church organist. And I'll remind you that you can hear him on Sunday mornings at least twice uh, playing on this magnificent instrument that I'm sure he'll tell you about um, at 8.30 and 11 a.m. when our worship services are, are held. And we are doing in person worship. So, Keith. Good afternoon and welcome to our concert. Um, it is a pleasure to serve this church and this community as well as the broader um, outreach of this concert series. Um, I just mentioned up front that the organ that you see here in all of its glory is a Rogers um, 484 hybrid instrument which combines pipes and digital sounds together in a very, very convincing way. More to be continued in, in future, but that is plenty for, for right now. Our first piece today is for organ. Um, the, uh, the English is Rejoice Now, Christian Souls. The German I will not try to speak in public, but it is a Lutheran hymn written in 1523, by Martin Luther. One of his early hymns, it was published in 1524, which goes back a little ways. And here is part of the text. Now rejoice, dear Christians, and let us leap joyfully that we may sing confidently and all in one with lust and love which God has turned to us in his sweet miracle. This is what is called a chorale prelude. Um, the melody is in the pedal. It's called the cantus firmus. And of course, I digress slightly to say that if it doesn't go well, it's a cantus infirmus. The bass is in the left hand, kind of a running bass, and the theme of joy is in the right hand. And this is the first piece that I actually sat down to finger officially when I was in high school. I hated to count, I hated to finger. This piece I could not play until I had a consistent fingering. So I sat down in the choir room one day and wrote out some fingering. And it's still a tricky piece to play, but it's really joyful and exuberant. So rejoice now, Christian Souls, by Johann Sebastian Bach on a Lutheran hymn by Martin Luther. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. I have to admit that you played that in worship a few weeks ago, and I was looking uh, for the third hand. I thought maybe the page turner was playing that melody, and then I finally realized that it was your feet. I have enough trouble trying to get the bass pedals to work when I'm playing a hymn, um, but that's, I think that's amazing. That's an amazing piece. Thank you for sharing it. Uh, we, ha- we are going to play uh, several pieces for piano and organ, and they're all arranged by the same fella, a fella in Chicago named Joel Rainey, who we both respect very much for his musicality, especially for his arranging abilities. The first one is To God Be the Glory. Um, the text is written by Fanny uh, Crosby, and the, um, the tune is written by William Doan. You, uh, Fanny Crosby, over 8,000 hymns, this lady wrote. Uh, Pass me not, O gentle Savior, blessed assurance. Um, William Doan collaborated with Fanny many, many times. Uh, he wrote over 2,000 hymn tunes, uh, such as Jesus, Keep Me Near the Cross. Here's a little bit of the text of To God Be the Glory. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. O come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. To God be the glory. Thank you. 
Thank you, Keith. <clears throat> the next one we're going to uh, play for you is another great, they're all great hymns, just hymns that we love to sing in this church, is Great is Thy Faithfulness. Um, it was written, the text was written by Thomas Obadiah Chisholm, who wrote over 1,200 sacred poems, by the way. And the tune is by William Runyon. Uh, he's best, probably, he wrote a lot of hymns, but he's best known as an editor. In fact, he was an editor for Hope Publishing that we have used, uh, the music from which we have used very often in this church. The text, I'm going to uh, do a little bit of the text for you, share a little bit of the text. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. And the refrain goes, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. This is Great is Thy Faithfulness, written by Chisholm and Runyon. Thank you. 
The next piece is More Love to Thee by Van Denman Thompson. He was born in 1890 and died in 1969 while I was in high school. He was an organist and composer. He taught at DePauw University and later chaired the music department. He was known as being shy and witty, and I will just leave it at that. This arrangement contrasts the strings and the flutes of the organ, um, the major strings of the, of the swell versus strings on the great division and wonderful eight and 16 foot strings on the choir, the bottom keyboard, and then contrasted to a harmonic flute at the end. My teacher at Andrews University, Dr. Becker, used to play this one frequently, so it's kind of ingrained in my, in my psyche. Reading the text for you of the first verse, More love to thee, O Christ, more love to thee. Hear thou the prayer I make, unbended knee. This is my earnest plea, more love, O Christ, to thee. More love to thee, more love to thee, set by Van Denman Thompson. Thanks, Keith. What a harmonically rich piece. Um, while I'm wowed by the big sound that this organ can make, the incredible sound, um, sometimes uh, when you use that kind of registration, it just takes my breath away. Thank you. Um, we're going to play a couple more back-to-back, um, -back, a couple more pieces for piano and organ. Again, they're all arranged by Joel Rainey. Uh, the first one is The Gift of Love, and uh, if I may speak for Ke uh, Keith, this is our favorite. This is the one we played this morning in worship, and um, it's just a really beautiful arrangement. Uh, it's arranged by uh, actually it's arranged by Joel Rainey, but it was written by Hal Hobson, who is uh, I think he's 87 this year. He's have he has over like 8,000 uh, published works. Um, he's known for choral works, especially, 
and uh, taking um, older music or taking classical music and making it more accessible. He also has the um, a cantata that was placed I at the bicentennial in the capsule that will be opened, of course, in 2076. And he was the only composer honored th uh, thusly. Um, the, the tune is The Water is Wide, or Whaley Whaley is the name of the, uh, of the Scottish tune. And you'll know it uh, immediately if you don't already know it. Uh, here's the text. I'm going to say the whole text because it's short, and it's just, I think it's just beautiful. Though I may speak with bravest fire and have the gift of all inspire, and have not love, my words are vain, as sounding brass and hopeless gain. Second verse, though I may give all I possess, and striving so my love profess, but not be given by love within, the prophet soon turns strangely thin. And the last verse, come spirit, come, our hearts control, our spirits long to be made whole, let inward love guide every deed, by this we worship and are freed.
Thank you, Keith. That really is my favorite one. Uh, the next one is, Oh, Worship the King. And interestingly, a lot of these hymns appear in oh, 50 or 100 or maybe even 200 hymnals. Oh, Worship the King is found in over 1,000 hymnals. So uh, it's, there's something special about it. it was, the uh, text was written by uh, a pr prolific hymn writer by the name of Robert Grant, who uh, was born in India, uh, served as a, uh, in parliament in Scotland. He was a lawyer, a political reader, uh, leader. He was also like the mayor of Bombay. So was someone who was very, very prominent in all of the things that he did. The tune was written by or arranged by William Gardner. Uh, and Gardner was uh, an exact contemporary of, of Ludwig van Beethoven, in fact, born the same year. And uh, in fact, he championed Beethoven and uh, the premiere of the f first of Beethoven's symphonies in 1794 in London was because of this man. He also wrote um, another uh, hymn that you might know is Take Up Thy Cross, the Savior Said. This is O Worship the King, Grant and Gardner, arranged by Joel Rainey.
Our next piece was also written by Martin Luther. Um, a mighty fortress is our God. Ein feste Berg ist unser Gott. I'll try that one. This is one of the best known hymns by the reformer Martin Luther, who was a prolific hymnodist and quite a musician in his own right. He wrote the words and composed the melody sometime between 1527 and 1529. It's been translated into English at least 70 times and also into many other languages. The text is a paraphrase of Psalm 46. The Mighty Fortress is one of the best loved hymns of the Lutheran tradition and especially among Protestants, but I've heard Catholics sing it as well. It has been called the Battle Hymn of the Reformation for the effect it had in increasing the support for the Reformers' cause. Um, there are four theories for its origins, which I will mention briefly. It was sung by Luther and his companions as they entered the city of Worms, or Worms, on, in preparation for the Diet. Or it was written as a tribute to Luther's friend, Leonhard Kaiser, who was executed in 1527. Or it was sung by the German Lutheran princes as they entered Augsburg again for this infamous diet. And there's also a possibility that it was composed in connection with the 1529 Diet of Speyer in which the German Lutheran princes lodged or protested their protest to the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V who wanted to enforce his 1521 Edict of Worms. I guess, in a light-hearted way, we could say that it's obvious that the Diet of Worms, or Worms, did not agree with Luther. The earliest extant hymnal in which this piece occurs was written in 1531, which means it was probably written between 1527 and 1529, since Luther's hymns were printed shortly after they were written. There are those who are not sure um, when the, the tune was composed. Many believe that he composed this uh, melody, Ein Fest Berg, from the text's first tune in the meter which suited the German text. The original melody is extremely rhythmic because it bends to all the nuances of the German text. It's now the consensus of music scholars that Luther did indeed compose the famous tune to go with the words. This tune is set by Homer Whitford. The setting has two verses. The first is a trio with the melody in the left hand. The second verse transforms or morphs into a French toccata with the melody in the right hand, the little finger. And it ends in ecstasy on a full organ sound, not the full organ, but it's full for this piece. So a mighty fortress arranged by Homer Whitford. <laughs>
on behalf of all of you watching at home, uh, wow, um, that's one of my favorite pieces, Keith, uh, the Whitford. Um, we move to our final piece, but before we do, I do want to thank uh, the AVL team that's here today, Bull and Lewis and Mike. Thank you for being here. It's been a very, very long day. On Sunday, we get here about 6.30, and uh, this is uh, almost 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So thank you guys for being here. We have a single, solitary audience member who we allowed to come, and she's been very quiet. Thank you, Marlita, for, for being a part of this today. And thank you, Kevin, for, uh, for hosting again today. Um, so we move from the Battle Hymn of the Reformation to the Battle Hymn of the Republic. He calls it, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory. It's written by an abolitionist and social activist by the name of Julia Ward Howe. She was inspired to write it when she went to the White House in 1861 with her husband and met Abraham Lincoln. And, and a friend of hers said, you know, I've got this great tune, but there's really lousy words. So how about you... Um, write some really better, a uh, better poetry to go with this tune. And it's a camp meeting tune that we all know. And, and it's uh, John Brown's Body. So um, the text is, I'm going to do a little bit of the text. Mine eyes have seen, and most of you know this, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. And then glory, glory, hallelujah. And I'm going to uh, read one more uh, set of lyrics because I think, and I think Keith said this, that his favorite part of today's program, my favorite part you just finished, but the, your favorite part is this setting of this particular verse from um, the battle hymn. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make us holy, let us die, is what she wrote. Sometimes we sing, let us live to make men free or all free. While God is marching on. This is mine eyes have seen the glory Thank you for uh, watching today. Um, I believe you'll be able to pull it up on YouTube. Is that right, Bull? Anytime. Uh, so if you want to share the program with others. Thank you, and God bless you.